Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Wow, I've got a good one for you today. Not one, not two, but three Messier targets for you to find tonight. Now, we call them Messier targets purely because what this is from is from the uh, Charles Messier's catalogue. Now, Messier was a French astronomer and uh, he was hunting uh, comets at the time. And he kept coming across these faint fuzzy patches in the sky and noting them down as an annoyance, really. <laughs> and uh, it's really funny because when he now passed away, you know, we think of him more as the Messier catalogue than we do of him. What he actually were was a comet hunter. But uh, this is why we call them uh, M's. And and it's it's all the list of in the order that he found them so if you see an m it just means a m target is basically a messier target so the 36th and the 37th and the 38th of these targets are what we're going to be looking at tonight now what's good about these three is they're all pretty much together and in a line but we have to find one of uh, my favorite constellations first and that is auriga now, Auriga is a lovely, big, bright constellation. You should have no trouble at all locating Auriga. Now, Auriga is uh, generally better viewed from the northern hemisphere, and it's definitely a winter constellation. Even though up to really early spring, you can still kind of uh, get Auriga in the field of view. Now, at the time of recording this video, which is early March, uh, Auriga is pretty much, it's, it's right up overhead almost uh, you want to face north and look pretty much overhead now there's a few ways of locating Auriga um, if you're not familiar with it one of them is from Orion um, one of them is from Taurus and another one's from Gemini and that's another great thing about Auriga it's just surrounded by really popular constellations to point you in the right direction so what we'll do, we'll just have a closer look now and show you exactly how to find Auriga and uh, M36, M37 and M38. Right, uh, first off, apologies, I did say face north in the uh, just earlier in the video. I, uh, I don't know why I said that, I meant south. <laughs> there couldn't have been any uh, polar opposite, could they? <laughs> so yeah, face, uh, you want to be facing south and look directly up. And uh, like I say, Orion is a great pointer for this one um, and a great indicator you're going in the right direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. So find Orion. Um, another uh, great pointer um, is just above it, we've got Taurus, um, which is a distinctive V shape. Um, a lovely little constellation. Now, to the upper left, we also have Gemini. Now, these three constellations are all really good pointers for Auriga. As you can see, Auriga lies in like the top of this little cluster of constellations um, another easy way of finding Auriga um, um, is go from Orion um, and what you can do if you draw an imaginary line you know I like my imaginary lines <laughs> so we draw, draw a line from this bottom star to the first star of his belt and uh, through the stop top star here keep going and as you can see about the same distance as Orion again um, it leads us on to uh, Auriga there. And uh, it really is a distinctive pentagram shape uh, in the sky. Uh, there's no mistake in it. I don't think you're going to have any trouble finding this constellation at all. Okay, then, on to the uh, meat and potatoes of this video. Let's zoom in. Now, the... Um, this is one that you're gonna have no again once you've found Auriga, you're gonna have no trouble finding uh, these three Messier targets. Now, what you want to do is once you've identified Auriga, identify these two stars here. Now, uh, these on the left hand side. Now, imagine an, uh, imagine an imaginary halfway point about there, and if we zoom in, let's just have a look you'll start to see there's three targets in a line start to appear. We've got one here, M37, <clears throat> excuse me, one here, M36, and finally there, 
M38 and as you can see they're all in this real nice neat little line that's nice and convenient for us to find. Now if I highlight M36 which is the one you're going to have no trouble seeing okay so if we just move it out again you can see how it's going to kind of look in the sky. Now, you know what I'm like. You probably know what's coming next. You know I like, uh, you, you'll, you'll know what's coming next if you're familiar with my channel. I like to triangulate everything. And as you can see, this one really does look like a, a, a perfectly nice equal triangle. Um, M36 um, is pretty much in the midway point. So once you've imagined this triangle on your star chart, whatever star chart you're using, whether it's Stellarium like this or off a, just eat it from a book, whatever, try and project that image onto the night sky, the same dimensions of this triangle. And it really is a good starting point to uh, put your finder scope and start to uh, fish about. Um, always use low power always use low power when you're looking for these deep sky targets especially star clusters and things like that what i mean by low power is you want something like a uh, 25 millimeter and above eyepiece and uh, you should have no trouble at all finding these great targets now like i say m36 is the brightest of these um and this is the one that you're probably gonna have no trouble seeing now m37 and m38 you may have um sorry uh, that's m38 you may have a little bit more trouble seeing don't be put off by this you know it probably just could be down to your sky conditions sky conditions are going to have a lot to uh, say for seeing uh, these other two but they are there so m36 is a uh, uh, the interesting thing about M36, actually, is when you look at it, see if you can see, you, well, you may look a little bit familiar to you, um, the structure of M36, and that because it looks a little bit like M45, the Pleiades. So that's something interesting for you to have a look for uh, when you're viewing M36. So, um, that's about it for those three. As you can see, they're, they're interested. Another thing to, uh, about uh, this area of the sky uh, that you may find interesting to have a look for is in Auriga. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention the most dominant star in Auriga. In fact, is Capella. Now, Capella is actually uh, the 11th brightest star in the sky, so you're going to have no problem seeing Capella. But uh, these three stars here, okay, so we've got Capella, sorry, that one underneath, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce them, okay, but what I call those three stars is the red, white, and blue stars. So that's something to have a look at um, with your telescope when you get on Auriga. See if you can pick out the, uh, the different colors in these stars. Um, I always call them the red, white, and blue stars, so something else interesting to have a look at when you're in this uh, area of the sky now just a few tips about when you're looking for deep sky objects and star clusters and it doesn't have to be just star clusters but even nebula is to use what's called and i have mentioned it before in uh, um, past videos and i don't mind repeating myself because not all of you are aware of this and that is to use averted vision now this simply means using the corner of the eye, if you like. So instead of looking directly at the center of the eyepiece, saying that you have got the target in the, in the center of the eyepiece, look slightly to either the left or the right of the object. So it's a little bit like if you were to place your, tip, your finger in the palm of your hand, look at, the, look at the tip of your finger, and then look at your pinky okay and keep looking at your pinky you can still see the tip of your finger in the palm of your hand that's just using averted vision so instead of looking at the spot you're looking at this spot um, you're looking here where your pinky is and looking at this spot do this practice in the eyepiece when looking uh, for deep sky objects this is especially useful in smaller aperture telescopes in larger aperture telescopes you are going to have no trouble at all but um, anything smaller and again it's all down to it really is down to the size of your telescope how you're going to see these um, deep sky objects and believe me in even in very large telescopes deep sky targets can look 
tiny and they can look faint and they can look fuzzy but don't be disappointed by that don't you know don't let that uh, be disappointed because you may have seen like i say i, I often fl uh, flash up photographs sometimes and um and it doesn't always do it justice to what you're actually seeing in the eyepiece because they are photographs after all they're you know they're on long time exposure so just remember a lot of deep sky objects look really fancy in a photograph and just look like a faint fuzzy in the eyepiece but this is not this is this is normal i think that's what i'm trying to get at don't think that you need more power or anything like this because like i say um, faint fuzzies can look like faint fuzzies even in large telescopes. So there you go folks, another three targets for you to uh, go and hunt down on the next clear night. And remember, don't be disappointed if you don't see them all. Um, and uh, just, it might be, you know, like a number of, of what I've already mentioned. It could be your sky conditions. It could be, um, it, 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 could, it could be the size of your telescope. It could be a, a few things. But one thing to always remember, that you know where they are now say if you only see M uh, m36 you don't see m37 or m38 you only get to see one of them at least now you've got that knowledge and your knowledge in astronomy has grown that little bit more so maybe in better sky conditions and, uh, and maybe when you get a larger telescope at least now you know where to look and find these targets well, there you go, folks. Another three great targets for you to hunt down on the next clear night. Thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this far, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It really does help the channel out. In the meantime, folks, take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.